People say that money changes a person, but isn't it actually revealing their true nature? Looking at Mark in front of me, I couldn't help but think so. With this much, I can quit my job and buy a house. Oh, maybe I should take mom and dad on that trip they've always wanted to go on. Even though it's the money I inherited from my father, Mark started to count his chickens as if it was his own. And in his plans, even my much disliked in-laws are included. This is what my father left for me. You have no right to dictate how I should spend this money. It was a cry from my heart. But Mark just snorted and laughed, waving his hand dismissively. All your money is now mine. If you go against me, we're gonna divorce, you know. That's classic Mark. He thinks if he says this, I'll just comply. He threatened me and then left the house. Things have changed now. It's not going to be the same anymore. I decided to start making some preparations while Mark was gone. My name is Lisa Harrison, 30 years old. Since graduating from community college, I've been working as a receptionist at a private clinic. I married Mark three years ago. I met Mark at a friend's wedding. At first, I was taken aback by his somewhat forceful approach, but there was a sense of relief since he was a friend of a friend, and before I knew it, we were dating and then got married. I'm gonna make you happy. It sounded a bit condescending, but I was genuinely happy. Back then, I dreamt of a happy married life. But I woke up from that dream pretty quickly. Before we got married, Mark and I would spend weekends at my place, just hanging out. That's why I didn't notice it. I never realized just how much of a mama's boy Mark was, or how much his parents doted on him. My son's wife isn't a guest, you know. I've heard that line so many times I'm sick of it. Every time I visit my in-laws, my mother-in-law keeps reminding me. It's not like I was lounging around or acting arrogant or anything. Ever since my mother-in-law pointed it out, I tried even harder to be considerate. Whenever I go to my in-laws' house, I quickly ask my mother-in-law if she needs my help things like carrying something or wiping the table. It's more exhausting than my job. To be honest, my mother-in-law has never made coffee for me even once. Mark and my father-in-law, watching my efforts, just chuckle and are like she still has a lot to learn. I was utterly fed up with all of them. If it was just a few times a year, maybe I could bear it. But with Mark, it's every week. Before marrying Lisa, I lived with my parents, so I prioritized spending weekends with Lisa. But now that I live with Lisa, I need to prioritize my parents on the weekends. Unfortunately, our apartment is only a 10-minute drive from his parents' house. So sometimes, Mark ends up at his parents' house even on weekdays. Moreover, the apartment we live in now was originally mine before we got married. We did get permission from the landlord, but it's quite cramped for two. Hey, shouldn't we look for a bigger apartment? I suggested this shortly after we got married, but his response gave me chills. It'd cost money, and if we're gonna do that, why not just move in with my parents? Spending 365 days in that in-law's house. Just thinking about it made me feel sick. Absolutely not. Since then, I've never brought up the idea of moving to Mark. It seems Mark senses my discomfort around my mother-in-law and he often gets mad at me for it. Sure, my mom might be a bit strict, but isn't that how moms are? Well, I guess you wouldn't know since you don't have a mother. Whenever the topic of my parents came up, I always felt Mark was looking down on me. I was raised by my father. My mother passed away when I was little, so it was just my father who raised me. I once overheard my father, when he was drunk, saying he and my mother had run off together, leaving their families behind. So, I didn't have any close relatives to rely on. Moreover, my father was a busy running his business. 
Actually, it was a housekeeper who took care of me. She was kind to me, but at the end of the day, she wasn't my real family. I've never been good at being openly affectionate, and that's carried through to this age. It's such a pity, you know? If only Lisa's dad had been a bit more business savvy, Mark said with a grin. I never liked discussing this topic, but for some reason, Mark occasionally brings it up, as if he's just remembered it. It's about my father's company went under. A few years ago, my father had to shut down the business he was running. I don't know all the details, but it probably failed due to mismanagement. This all happened around the time I decided to get married. Worried about my father, I was like why don't we live together? I knew Mark wouldn't be thrilled about it, but I couldn't just abandon my father. In the end, though, my father chose to live on his own. Just think about your happiness, Lisa. But Dad, seeing you happy is all that matters to me. Oh, and by the way, congratulations on your wedding. His kind smile from that time is still fresh in my memory. I wished he could have met his grandchild, but unfortunately, we had trouble conceiving. Two years after our wedding, my mother-in-law suggested I get a medical checkup, and I did. The results showed there was no problem on my end. So, there might be an issue with Mark. I proposed that he also get tested. Especially, since it was hard hearing my mother-in-law constantly telling me I was useless because I couldn't give her a grandchild. But Mark was adamant about not doing it. There's no way I'm gonna do that. We're not animals. It's embarrassing to even think about getting tested. I felt cornered into the testing by his mother. I didn't really have a say in the matter. Mark knew that and yet. Please, Mark. If there's nothing wrong, we can be at ease. If there's an issue, we can address it. I just want to know. My mother-in-law's pressure is really getting to me. Mark shook his head. Wait, so you want me to get tested just because you feel pressured by my mom? That's not it. I just thought if there was a solution. Is there even a solution to a blessing like that? Probably, you just can't stand my mom's constant nagging. That's none of my business. No matter how much I begged, Mark wouldn't go for the checkup. He knew the pressure and the constant nagging from my mother-in-law was getting to me. He didn't back me up. Whenever I tried to discuss it, he had brushed me off and was like that's none of my business. My weekdays were filled with work and house chores, and weekends were visits to my in-law's home. Those days kept going on, and I was completely worn out. I thought about getting divorced, but thinking of my father, I just couldn't go through with it. I couldn't betray my father, who wished for my happiness and was delighted with my marriage. A divorce wasn't an option. Maybe that's why Mark picked up on it. One day, Mark went to my in-law's home alone and returned the next morning. It was unusual for Mark to visit his parents alone. I felt somewhat relieved, but also a bit suspicious. A few days later, I saw an incoming call from a girl on Mark's cell phone left on the table. Mark quickly hid it. What's the hurry? Who's that? Nobody, just a friend. A friend? It's 1 AM. Why would a woman call you at this time? I knew of Mark's infidelity issues. This had happened many times before. As I pressed further, Mark replied with a hint of irritation. Can you stop nagging? If you have a problem, let's just get a divorce. Maybe I showing my vulnerability at that moment was a mistake. It probably gave Mark more power. At first, he only threatened me verbally, but eventually, he started mentioning divorce more often. If you don't want a divorce, do as I say. I felt helpless against a triumphant mark. And then, the unthinkable happened. My father suddenly passed away in an accident. I felt regretful, thinking I hadn't done enough to honor him. 
Mark watched me with cold eyes as I cried so hard that my head hurt. He was like, if you cry, you'll just look uglier. I and my father didn't have any relatives. Inevitably, I was the one who had to take charge of the funeral. Mark quickly attended the funeral and left before the end. After everything was over, I was in a daze for a while. After the funeral, an unfamiliar man came to visit me. It turned out he was a lawyer appointed by my father. Mr. Harrison entrusted me with the matter of the inheritance. Huh? Hearing that my father left something for me made me happy. But considering he had to close his business a few years ago, I wasn't expecting much. Then I was floored. Thirteen million dollars? Yes, there will be some deductions, but... No, this can't be right. He handed me a letter in my father's handwriting and a will. It said my father had left me a whopping $13 million. I was taken aback by the enormous amount. According to the lawyer, I had assumed my father's company had gone under due to financial difficulties, but he had actually chosen to sell it. That sale turned into the $13 million that was now being entrusted to me. I understand, but... Just because I'm his daughter, should I really inherit such a vast sum? Seeing me in shock, the lawyer smiled and said, I've known Mr. Harrison for a long time. He always wished for your happiness. It might be confusing given the sudden news, but having money isn't a bad thing. Maybe consider accepting it as Mr. Harrison's wishes? But... Don't worry about the inheritance procedures and taxes. I'll handle all that. I glanced down at my father's letter again and nodded. If this was something my father left wishing for my happiness, I'd be grateful to accept it. Thank you for your assistance. And so, I unexpectedly came into a lot of money. But I knew I couldn't just blow it all. In fact, I didn't even want to touch it. I'd keep it safe, and if I ever truly found myself in a bind, I'd use it for assistance. It became something of a good luck charm for me. Days passed, and I hadn't told anyone about the inheritance. One day, after coming home from work as usual, I was shocked by the scene before me. What? There was my bank statement that I issued before on the dining table. Mark was staring at it. What are you doing? Why are you going through my documents without asking? I tried to grab it, but Mark swiftly hid them close to his chest, smirking at me. That sneering grin of his. What's the big secret? Hiding all this cash from me? Well, did you do something shady to get all this? Mark's sarcastic gaze infuriated me, prompting a retort. No! This is the inheritance my father, he left me. I reached out to reclaim my document, but Mark tucked them into his shirt, refusing to give them back. Give it back to me. Please. I always thought your dad was a good-for-nothing businessman who ran his company into the ground. Never imagined he'd leave such a gift behind. Mark laughed mockingly and, as he stood up, he shoved me causing me to fall flat on my rear. After I was pushed and landed on my rear, he looked down at me with a smug smirk. Don't worry. I'll give it back. Just want to check everything out first. Mark hummed to himself checking them. When he finished looking, he casually tossed the document back in my direction. All in all, two million dollars, huh? In reality, there was more. For emergencies, I had diversified the money into a new account. Mark seemed satisfied, grinning without a clue. With this much, I can quit my job and even buy a house. Yeah. Maybe I'll take dad and mom on that trip they've always wanted to go on. Despite it being the money I inherited, Mark started making plans as if it was his own. And, what's worse, he included my detested in-laws in those plans. Don't decide things on your own. 
This money came from the hard work my father put into his company. It wasn't for Mark to spend as he pleases. This is what my dad left for me. You have no right to dictate how it should be spent. It was a cry from the depths of my heart. But Mark just laughed it off, waving his hand dismissively. All your money is mine now. And if you disagree, we're gonna get a divorce. Emphasizing the word of divorce as if to threaten me, Mark left the house. Mark didn't return after leaving that day. He's probably staying at his parents' place, as usual. They must be having a bigger blast than usual this time. It's about those in-laws of mine and Mark. Dreaming about how they'll spend the two million dollars. But those dreams will never come true. Things are different now. In the end, it was two days later when Mark returned home. In the evening, as I was vacuuming, I heard the front door swing open followed by heavy footsteps. The door between the hallway and the living room opened, and in came Mark, all smiles. But his smile faded instantly as he looked around. What the heck is this? Oh, you're back after two days. I continued to vacuum without a care. Mark looked around and said, Why is all the furniture and luggage gone? Everything's gone. Turning off the vacuum, I smiled sweetly at him. Well, I decided to cancel the lease at the end of the month. But don't worry. Your stuff's right over there. Please sort it out by the end of the month. I pointed to the luggage, carelessly piled in the corner of the room. Mark stood there, mouth agape, in sheer surprise. Wait, what's going on? This makes no sense. It's simple. I'm terminating the lease here, so you'll need to move out by the end of the month. I've already moved my stuff out. Whatever's left of yours by the end of the month, I'll toss. But why? I don't get why you'd terminate the lease. Mark held his head in frustration. You don't need to understand. Just leave, okay? I ignored Mark and started to vacuum again. But then, my phone rang. I was interrupted again and answered the call. Lisa? It was my mother-in-law. She sounded unusually chipper over the phone. Yes, it's Lisa. I heard from Mark. Good for you. She kept rambling on without waiting for my response. He regretted marrying someone as unattractive and as cold as you, who can't even have kids. But this time, we're thankful. Thankful for what? Well, thanks to you, we can now go on that vacation and even get a new car, right? Oh, I'm so excited. It's good to have someone who has money and a kind son. I hated to break it to her but I never promised such things. Mark probably spilled everything at my in-law's house. He might have even said something like he would buy them anything. Sorry to interrupt, but I never made such promises. And I have no intention of spending my money on you. Huh? As my mother-in-law finally went silent, I took a deep breath. You weren't seriously counting on using my money, were you? The money of the same person you've made fun of and belittled all this time? It was the first time I'd ever spoken back to my mother-in-law since getting married. If I thought about who I'd used to be, I was like a completely different person. My mother-in-law just stood there silently, and Mark, standing in front of me, was gaping at me in shock. I waited a few seconds, but no response came from her. Is that all you wanted to say? I'm quite busy, so excuse me. I said quickly and then hung up the phone. Lisa, how could you talk back to mom like that? That's so rude. Rude? I was just pointing out a mistake. Mark kept mumbling something, but I just continued cleaning. About 10 minutes later, there was a loud knocking on the door. I opened it to find my in-laws standing there. Seems like they'd rushed over after that phone call. 
Lisa, what's going on? As soon as they entered, my mother-in-law, her face beat red, started yelling. How could you say something so hurtful? I was so shocked I felt like I was gonna faint. Wish she had. My father-in-law was nodding in agreement next to her. Lisa, maybe you're getting ahead of yourself because of all that money, but mind your manners. You're being very disrespectful. It was the exact thing I wanted to say back to them. Who was the disrespectful one there? Just after my father passed away, they came to me and were like good for you. They're disrespectful ones who acted as if my inheritance was theirs. While I was shaking with anger, my mother-in-law reached out her hand towards me. What do you want? Your money is basically mine. What? When I was puzzled, Mark added some clarification about my mother-in-law's actions. She's asking for your money. I mean, you might become greedy and keep all the money to yourself. Hey, if anything, just transfer it to my account now. That'll make me feel better. Perfect. That's a great idea. If you have too much money, you might get taken advantage of or worse. Wyas shouldn't have money. While the three of them were getting all worked up, I rolled up the vacuum cleaner's cord and leaned the machine against the wall. And then, as I was preparing to leave, I firmly said, What's all this talk about being a wife and cheating? That's just some sound advice from my parents, for you to act properly as my wife. Excuse me? I'm becoming single. What? Sweat began to form on Mark's forehead. What are you talking about, Lisa? Mark's eyes darted from left to right. You said if I didn't obey, we'd get divorced, right? I couldn't agree with your views, so I simply went ahead with the divorce process. Just like that? I never approved of this. That's forgery. There was no need for forgery. I pulled several contract documents related to lawyer who assists divorce from my bag and tossed them onto the table. They fluttered to the floor. Look, you've given me the contract with a lawyer. Every time I had an opinion, you'd shout divorce. You've handed me with a lawyer contact. I can't count how many times I went along with his ridiculous demands, all because he used the threat of divorce. You thought that just by mentioning divorce, I'd do whatever you said? Mark gulped down his saliva. Yeah, I did. Because you don't want to divorce me, right? I mean, come on, you know you don't, right? Mark's voice wavered pathetically. You thought that just because I didn't want a divorce, I'd obey again? With a frown, Mark nodded. After all, you love me, right? You want to be with me, right? I couldn't help but sigh at his grave misunderstanding. Of course, I loved him once, enough to marry him. But just because you fall in love enough to get married, it doesn't mean that feeling will last forever. How can he not understand that after all his selfish acts? Such an egotist. Sorry, but I don't love you anymore. In fact, I haven't loved you for quite a while. That's, that's a lie. The only reason I didn't divorce him earlier was because I didn't want to worry my father. I thought I was happily married. I wished that were the case. Looking back, my father might have known all along. Now that my dad's passed away, I don't see any reason to continue this marriage with you. So, that's why you're giving up this apartment? I gave a slight nod. Mark sank to his knees, shoulders drooping. My mother-in-law rushed over to Mark immediately. It's despicable to abandon your loving husband the moment you get some money. My father-in-law, still by Mark's side, glared at me. Absolutely. You've made sweet Mark look like this. As an apology, pay him damages, you gold digger. Damages? I'm not obligated to pay any. What did you say? 
After all, I've done nothing wrong. Unlike Mark, who's been cheating left and right, I've never strayed. Mark's face turned ghostly pale. Your childhood friend Sarah, Harry from work, and that girl Lily from the bar, right? Counting on my fingers, Mark's face got even paler. My mother-in-law looked away, avoiding eye contact. Sarah is, well, different. I mean... My mother-in-law stammered. Judging from her reaction, she probably knew about Mark's affairs, maybe even aided them. Must have been tough, helping Mark create alibis for his affairs. But don't worry. The cameras and voice recorders I installed in Mark's car and bag have provided all the evidence I need. When I said so, all three of them looked like they'd seen a ghost. Come on, Lisa. I can't live without you. Don't dump me. That's right, Lisa. You have a lot of money. What do you want more? Why do you have to make Mark suffer more? That's the first thing they're worried about? I let out a long sigh. That money and our divorce are two different things. That money is what my father left for me. I didn't do anything to you. But you are cheating on me. I'm determined to get divorced with him. There's no way back. Word's gonna get around, one way or another. Word might spread among our acquaintances. At work, bosses, colleagues, even those he merely recognizes might be talking behind his back. The local bars might not judge him too harshly, but he's likely lost his regular spot. There's no way Mark can continue living life as he once did. Lisa, wait, hear me out. Give me another shot. Mark was teary-eyed and shaking uncontrollably. Another chance? This is my chance. Finally getting away from you and your parents. Does Mark even realize how much pain I've endured during our three years of marriage? Actually, I went ahead and made the car and vacation bookings after getting caught up in the excitement that day. I might be able to cancel the vacation, but with the car dealership being a long-time contact, I can't back out now. He probably wants to say he doesn't have immediate money for these bills. That's not my problem. With that familiar retort, I tried to leave the apartment. Hold on, Lisa. I'll leave the divorce matter to the lawyer. This is the last time I'm seeing any of you. Honestly, I won't miss this at all. Just make sure you tidy up before leaving. Your parents are here, so you don't have anything to worry. Bye. I waved briefly, closed the door quickly, and jumped into my car. Just as I pulled out of the driveway, I saw Mark chasing after me from the entrance, but I didn't care and sped up. Soon, he was out of sight. Later, according to my lawyer, my mother-in-law and father-in-law gave him a hard time. And yet, he's my lawyer, and they went on complaining to him. Just one little affair, she should have let it slide if she wanted a divorce. Exactly. It's such a trivial matter. Lisa should have laughed it off, she's so petty. When my lawyer was like it wasn't just one affair. There were three other women. And considering the duration, it can't be brushed aside. This is a particularly severe case, they finally shut up. The very fact that Mark, a grown man, brought his parents to the discussion was laughable. My lawyer was like after this fiasco, I doubt he's gonna get remarried, with a wry smile. As expected, word of Mark's infidelity spread like wildfire, turning his life upside down. Unable to bear the judgmental gazes of those around him, he quit his job. Married friends started to avoid him, and without money, he stopped going out to bars. Mark has been cooped up at my ex-in-law's house ever since. On the other hand, I've relocated to a distant state. It was my father's hometown. Not because I was searching for my grandparents. I simply wanted to experience life in the place where my father was born and raised. 
It's a town that's neither too urban nor too rural, just right. Now, I'm working part-time at a local grocery store. I haven't touched any of my father's inheritance yet. There were times I was tempted to spend it, but I'd always think of Mark and his family and hold back. If I start spending that money recklessly, it's over. I don't know what the future holds, but for now, I'm content. When I meet my father someday, I genuinely want to be able to say I'm happy. From now on, I plan to live honestly.